The one thing I didn't like about my cupboards is how stuffed and crammed they got, but I had a solution. First thing I want to pick up is a mop rack, and they are going to be perfect. I'll need three of these. Next, we're going to get some mop handles. Just the handles, that's all we need. On the rack, what you want to do is on the hook, you want to bend it forward. That way, it goes directly against the wall and doesn't stick out too much. You can use a pair of pliers or your hands. Just get it as straight as possible. Next, what we're going to do is paint. Just some black spray paint will do the job. Now, this is a great time to teach a lesson on spraying. We want to use little bursts and not too much at a time. Spray paint likes to run. So, to keep it from dripping, we want to make sure we just do small, even little coats. If it takes two or three, that's fine because spray paint can dry pretty quick. So, once you get this on there, it's good. Now, on the handles, we don't want to cut off the top. We want to cut off the bottom with the screw end. So what we'll do is mark it exactly the length we want, and we're going to use a metal saw because these handles are metal. When you're cutting metal, you want to use a good blade that's used for metal and go slow. Once you get it cut all the way through, just snap it. It'll come right off. This is not the thickest metal, so it's good to snap. Next, we're going to lay out our two pieces. Remember, we measured and cut them already, and then we're going to take the first rack, and that's going to get us our width. We're going to put the first one all painted at the top. We're going to put the next one in the middle, a few inches down, and then the third one will go at the bottom. The way we're going to join these to the handles is we're going to use black zip tie. Just go ahead and put it around the top, put it in, and you're going to pull it tight. We're going to do this to both sides and cut off the excess. This is the other side, and we're going to put that on too. Now, I made sure that I put two on each side on each rack. That gives it enough friction to where when we load it, it won't fall down. Once you get it cut, twist it around the back. Now, on the screws for the wall, you want to actually leave them sticking out a little bit, not all the way against the wall, because we're going to take those handles and slip them right on there. Next, it's time to decorate. I thought a little bit of plates and some coffee mugs would look great. But there's one thing, it just didn't look right to me. I knew there was something else I could do. So what I did was added some greenery. And look how amazing that turned out. I just love it. You can put as many or as few on there as you want. And absolutely turned out great and took out a little bit of that excess clutter in my cabinets. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did making it. And what an addition to the side of the wall and to our kitchen. Head over to Dollar Tree and grab these hanging flower baskets. You'll also need a tomato cage. I stuck it into the ground and grabbed some black Rust-Oleum spray paint and spray painted the entire tomato cage. Now you can use anything that you want to cut the bottom ends off. Once all of the legs were removed, I placed the flower baskets onto the tomato cage. This project was inspired by my friend Shelly at Gilbert Marketplace from Home Talk. You can use it in your bathroom you can use it by your front door. Use it as a plant stand. Place a plant in the top and the bottom or place your watering can in the bottom for the convenience. You can use it in so many ways in your kitchen and one of my favorite ways to use it is to place fruit and vegetables in the top and a bunch of snacks in the bottom. This makes a really fast grab and go station for everyone in my family. Make a craft corner or homework station on your kitchen table with it. I placed it on a Lazy Susan, place the books into the baskets and place near your favorite chair. For more bathroom tips, I added my face cleaning regiment to the top and my blow dryer and curling iron to the center. You can use this in your closet or anywhere where you're short on storage. I'm adding some of my hats to it and then on the bottom, I'm rolling up some leggings and placing those. For my guest room, I added some water and some snacks to the top and I added some hand towels and washcloths to the bottom. This will make it nice and convenient for when guests come to stay. And I hope this inspires you to create one of these organizational hacks of your own. Have you ever wondered what to do with a clementine or a mandarin orange box? Typically, these end up in recycling bins. We're gonna start by painting this entire box with spray paint. So, depending on where you live, it is winter time where I'm at, so spray painting isn't really an option for me. However, this is an option for you if you live in a climate that has warmer weather. You also have the option of hand painting. Both of these are great options. They are both chalk paint, just one is in a spray paint form. 
and I'm going to start, this is probably gonna take a couple coats and I'm going to just start by covering the whole thing. Now what's gonna help me make this dry faster? It's like my favorite tool when it comes to anything that I'm painting. It is my blow dryer. So grab your blow dryer if you wanna make this process go a little bit quicker. My tip for you is to allow each layer to dry completely before you start painting an additional layer on. The next part of this project is acquiring some jars. So I actually got these jars from Hobby Lobby and they were 50% off, so I got a great deal on these. And I also got some chalkboard labels. So you're gonna use a either a paint marker or a chalkboard marker. And I'm gonna write on these chalkboard labels what I'm gonna be putting in each of these jars. So I do have some pencils that I'm gonna be using. So we'll just put these off to the side for a second. I like to write on a flat surface, so I highly recommend writing out your labels before you stick them on your jars. So, so we're gonna write pencils. I'm also gonna be doing uh, paper clips. We have markers. We'll let that dry for a second. And colored pencils. We're gonna use the bigger chalkboard label for the actual outside of the box. So I'm gonna write office slash art supplies. All right, so now I'm gonna start sticking my labels on my jars and then we're gonna fill them up. So we have our chalkboard label on the front, just saying what's gonna be in this organizer. And we're gonna load it up with our jars. And there we have it. Here is our organizer. Now let's see what it looks like on my desk. There you have it. I have my beautiful office slash art supply organizer for my desk. Not only would this make a great organizer for your desk, you could also use it for a bookshelf. You could use it for uh, craft storage. You could use it for anything that you need it to be. And it's super inexpensive and on budget. Thank you so much for watching Home Talk and I will see you next time. Bye. This is a great space saving technique. I picked up these containers at Dollar Tree. They can be found in the travel section and you get three for $1.25. The first thing I'm gonna do is use some nice and strong super glue or E6000 and attach the magnets to the bottom of each one of the containers. While that's drying, I'm gonna upcycle an old picture frame. On the back of this frame, I am going to add some magnets. Again, these are nice and strong so that this frame isn't going anywhere. Now I'm gonna use these glittery black stickers I found just to put the word spices on the bottom of the frame. The lids of these jars are just white plastic lids, so I'm using a Sharpie to write the name of spices that I use most often right on top. Now it's time to fill up the jars. I'm using a funnel for the more fine spices, otherwise I can just pour them right in. Now it's time to arrange it on my fridge. I'm gonna put up the frame first where I want it. This is on the side of my fridge, right next to my counter. Really easy to access when I'm cooking. And then I can just stick the jars right on the fridge inside the frame. The frame is just a nice decorative way to keep everything organized. I love having these right at my fingertips instead of having to dig through a cabinet. I'm able to buy my spices in bulk and just put a small amount into these jars and then use them as I'm cooking. I hope this inspired you to create some magnetic spice jars for your kitchen. Thanks for watching Home Talk. We'll see you next time.